Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we've been doing a series on uh, gr the grading of every team's defense, which we're about to do right now, forwards and goaltenders. You can go check them out uh, in my other videos. They're pretty cool. I do a live show on the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, as you can see there. And we do the gradings there. It's all interactive. And people come on, I say, Anaheim, what's their defense grade from A to F? And uh, they go, it's a whatever it is. And then we average it all out, and that's how we come to the grade. So join, sub. If you sub, you will get my live feeds come up on your screen whenever they happen. Also, I send it out in the morning. I tell you when I'll be on and all that kind of stuff like that. It's fun. So much frolic. I love coffee. Mm. Number, number coffees. Okay, we're going to do the um, the gradings for every team's defense. Every NHL team, all 32 teams and their gradings coming up right now. But after you hit the subscribe and the bell, right? Of course, you don't want to miss out. Why would you want to miss out? Also, Steel Flyers. There's Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. Check it out if you like all the four major North American sports and teams that are within it. You will love it. Go check it out. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. All right. First, we start with the Anaheim Ducks. And uh, there we go. Anaheim Ducks. You got Lindholm, Shattenkirk, Fowler, Manson, Larson, and Drysdale. Now, the community, Pearls of Wisdom community, they went D plus here. I personally went C, but they were all over the place. Um, I personally think Lindholm, Manson, and Fowler are still pretty decent defensemen. Tell me if you still think so, Anaheim Ducks fans. Plus, you got Jamie Drysdale going to be burning it up this year, possibly trying to get Rookie of the Year. Um, and Jacob Larson isn't bad at 24 years old. Um, big guy, can play good, solid defense. So um, I actually don't mind this defense, considering they're in a rebuild. But I had it as a C. They have it as a D+. Plus. Tell me what you think of the defense there in uh, – the comment section, if you could. Arizona, uh, we basically, we went F hardcore. And we shouldn't, you know what? I don't think we really should have given it F just for Jacob Chikrin. Just for Jacob Chikrin, he should get at least an F plus. <laughs> because um, he is freaking awesome. But Laya Bushkin as your second line, second D right winger, a guy who was barely even making the lineup last year. Uh, Shane Gosh to Spear coming over from Philadelphia is a huge question mark, although I think he's going to be not bad there. All the pressures off of him and everything. I think it'll be pretty interesting how he turns out. Uh, Anton Stroman from Florida could barely make Florida's lineup last year. And uh, Kyle Kobianko gets an opportunity now, which is good for him. And then Connor Timmons, who they brought over from the Kemper trade. Um, we'll see how he turns out. He has kind of underdeveloped as far as Colorado was concerned. Maybe he'll get a better chance here in Arizona. But it was an F. The Boston Bruins. Um, Greslick, McElvoy. Riley, Carlo, Forbert, and Clifton. And if you think somebody else is going to make it here, uh, let me know. Maybe uh, back a nine in, but we're going with the top defense as suggested by Cap Friendly here. Um, B minus is what we gave Boston, and I'm on the fence about it because I love, love, love McAvoy. Brandon Carlo is underrated. Mike Riley is actually very underrated as well. I'm a little concerned about Matt Greslick. He never really, he hasn't really turned out to be what they expected him to be. Um, but I thought Derek Forber was an underrated pickup. And Connor Clifton for a, a smaller defenseman. 
plays a lot bigger than he he's his size. And uh, I kind of, I kind of, I'm iffy about it. I'm very iffy. That's why I did the B minus. Everybody was kind of iffy back and forth. We thought about it for a while, but we went B minus Boston Bruins fans. What do you throw in there? And what do you think that they're going to need if they should they add before the season starts? Uh, Buffalo Sabres. Um, actually, there was a couple Fs in here, but it actually ended up being D minus. And I think that was just basically they played so much better in the uh, second half last year. So I think a lot of people gave them a little bit of credit for that. Granado had them playing a lot better brand of hockey. But on paper, it's really sketchy. Rasmus Dahlin was struggled, has struggled to become what they expected. But he's only 21 years old. And I think he's going to have a good year this year. Um, Henri Yokiharu, same thing, only 22. I think a lot of people forget that these are just pretty much kids. And then Jacob Bryson actually played really well last year in the situation there in Buffalo. Colin Miller is a guy. He's a player that plays in the NHL. Uh, Will Butcher, ugh. and then Mark Pesek. That's a problem at 5'6". Uh, I think there's more chance that Somebody like Matias Samuelson is going to come up and take one of those spots. It is thin. I think the D minus really kind of is optimistic a little bit, but uh, you might even want to go lower than that based on Butcher and Pissick being in your five six. But from what we the the, the improvement in the second half was really the uh, main reason why we went with that. Next, Calgary Flames. Um, the community that's of my uh, on my live, they came up with the C minus for the Flames. Uh, Noah Hannafin, Christopher Tanup had a great year last year. Um, Noah Hannafin still not reaching it, but he is only 24 years old. Uh, Yusuf Alamaki is. I had actually a C. I gave it a little higher because I like. I think Yusuf is going to have a strong year this year. Um, he's a big kid. Had a little bit of a tough uh, go of it last year, but he's only 21 years old. He's got all the tools to be a fantastic defenseman. Uh, by the way, Rasmus Anderson here as the second pair right defenseman, he's going to take that tan out of spot all day. And that's the reason why I give him a C is I really like Rasmus Anderson quite a bit. Connor McKay, uh, Mackey, I think it is, or Mackey, uh, looks like he's going to be a good one coming out of college. Um, not a big fan of Nikita Zadorov, Nikita Zadorov but it, um, apparently his defensive analytics looked really good in Chicago. Might have beat my eye test. I saw a guy who looked like he couldn't get the puck out of the zone far too often, far, far more than not, and really had to rely on his defense partner for that to happen. But he's not bad at getting the puck off of the other team's stick. And uh, as long as he can get it to a partner, he, he's not that bad. So I gave them a C, uh, but the uh, the community gives them a C minus. Tell me what you think about that, Calgary fans. Next, uh, Carolina, uh, both of us, uh, Slavin and Pesci, can, can they really be called underrated anymore? Uh, I don't think Slavin and Pesci can be called underrated anymore. They have been absolutely fantastic. Um, Slavin, to me, as far as I'm concerned, has got to get in Norris before he retires. I'll be really upset if he doesn't. Uh, Brady Shea, I think he's a little overrated for Carolina. Um, they play him as a shutdown guy, but really he's more of an offensive guy and he doesn't put up a lot of numbers, but they really love him there in Carolina. So what am I going to say? And then picking up Ethan Bear. From for Fogel, I think you're really gonna like that pickup. He is really good defensively, uh, even at 5'11, 200 pounds. Edmonton gets shoes away their young, uh, young small defenseman usually too quickly. Look at Petrie, uh, Schultz. You know they do it all the time, and they probably did it here again. I think Carolina fans, you're gonna be really happy with Bear. Getting a little thinner with Jake Gardner and Ian Cole, though. Ian Cole does play. is It's the perfect spot for him there. 
I have a feeling they're going to, oh no, it's not, that's right, it's not going to be Gardner. I think Ian Cole can play left defense. It's going to be D'Angelo, trust me there. And at a million dollars, that was an unbelievable pickup for Carolina. Um, especially when I found out that really it was all overblown in New York there for a million dollars. Anyways, we both give Carolina a big A for that. Excellent job, Carolina. Excellent job. Well done. Next, um, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, yeah, this was... I think we had a really difficult time putting it all together here with the with bringing in Jones, Seth Jones, who really had a poor year the last two years in Columbus. But I think a lot of people have this feeling that he's going to be able to turn it around in Chicago in a better situation for him. So, um, and then Calvin DeHaan is an analytics darling. Really, people like uh, the analytics people like him a lot. Um, pretty simple guy, but he plays plays a decent brand of hockey. And then Jake McCabe, I love Jake McCabe. I love that pickup. Connor Murphy, also an analytics darling. So it's it's like a nondescript strong defense there. My problem, I think, where the minus came in from is you got Riley Stillman and Ian Mitchell, who are very unproven defensemen playing in their 5-6 spot. Knowing Chicago, though, they probably have some prospect or guy coming up from the minors like Wyatt Kalniak, who I think is probably going to be the guy there that plays in those spots as well. Regardless, we both gave them a B-. minus. We were just two back and forth. There were some people that had them as high as B+. Plus, and I think there was one guy that had him as a C. I think that's way low. I, I like B- minus isn't a bad spot. Bad, uh, bad grade for them. Next, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, this one was fairly easy, but bringing over Devin Devin Tage uh, last year for two seconds. What an amazing move by Joe Sakic. He just keeps on doing it over and over and over again. Kale McCarr on the right side. Uh, Gerard and Eric Johnson. Um, if Eric Johnson apparently is healthy now, and if he can even get to 80% of what he was, he will do a lot for that um, defense as well. I think he's probably going to play more in Ryan Murray's spot. As long as Ryan Murray is healthy, he can play there. Then you got this Bowen Byram kid just lighting it up. Uh, what a fantastic lefty. We should we almost should have did lefty, right D there. We, big, we gave him both. We gave him an A+. Plus. Probably one of the best in the league, both of us, uh, both of us. The community, which would include me, but my personal score grade was uh, A+. Plus. Blue Jackets. Columbus Blue Jackets took some big losses here with Jones, but I think they made up for it quite a bit with Adam Boquist. That was a nice pickup there. Um for they, they got a lot for Jones, honestly. For a guy who struggled the last two years, especially defensively, I thought they got a heck of a lot. Um, with Wierenski, of course, was their best defenseman and still now will be their best defenseman. Gavrikov, underrated guy who, who, who now gets to play in the 3D spot. Andrew Peake gets his big shot. And then Jake Bean, nice little pickup from Carolina with Dean Kukan. I think this is a little underrated. Um, I had it as a, uh, I had it as a, sorry, did I have it as a D? Why did I have a D here? I think it's because of Andrew Peak. Huh. That's weird. I had it as a D. Now reading it, I changed my mind. See how fast I can change. But the community had it as a C. We have it as an average defense. I think there's some upside here. To this defense, and it's going to depend on Larson, the new coach there, how that all turns around. Either that has coaching probably has more effect on defensemen than it does on forwards. Okay, next Dallas Stars. Um, we both went uh, Lindell, Asa Lindell, one of the most underrated guys. When I did the most underrated 
uh, player from every team. Essa Lindell was that. Go check out that video, by the way. John Klingberg, who they have to sign, but he's there right now. Suter, Kiskinen, fantastic top four. Sekera and Hackenpah is a drop, but I don't think it's that bad. I had I gave him a B plus, and so did the community give him a B plus on this. Um, getting a little long in the tooth with uh, Ryan Suter there, but for the most part, um, and and Andre Sekera, but for the most part, I think this defense is is right up there with some of the best in the league. Next, Detroit Red Wings. Um, I found it odd. The community, the people on my live stream that we did this uh, through, they took, they set a C for Detroit's defense. Um, Nick Letty is not a great defenseman. He's good offensively, but he's really bad uh, defensively. Um, I think he was brought in more or less to help out their power play and maybe flip it for a pick in, in, at the trade deadline. Uh, Heronic, I like a lot. He's probably going to keep on improving. And then Danny DeKaiser, can he turn it around after an injury plague sort of career? Maurice Sider looks like a beast, but he's only 20 years old. And then Mark Stahl and Troy Stetcher is pretty math. Like, I don't honestly know where the community came up with the C. Uh, there were some people that went as high as a B. No, C plus. I think it was C plus, C plus. A lot of C pluses. I had a D. I, I, I still don't see it here with the defense with Detroit. Tell me what you think, Detroit fans, or anybody else for that matter. What do you think of that D there? Uh, next, Oilers. And uh, very little surprise here. In fact, I went a little higher than the community of people who were doing this. And you can do this, by the way. Just go on my sub to my channel, and uh, you can contribute to these fine polls that make these videos. Uh, offensively, uh, the reason why I gave, gave, I gave the Oilers a C, the uh, community gave him, them a D plus. I almost gave him a C plus because offensively, this team is going to put up a lot of points on defense. Nurse, Barry, great uh, offensive defenseman. Now, Darnell Nurse's 16 goals probably aren't going to happen too often. Uh, that was in a very high shooting percentage. But still, he's a very good offensive defenseman, just not very good defensively, and neither is Tyson Berry. Neither is Duncan Keith if you play him too many minutes, and it sounds like they're going to play him too many minutes. Cody Ceci. A little underrated. He started doing better in his last year in Toronto, and he did well in Pittsburgh last year. Probably going to be their best defensive defenseman. The problem is I don't really like that being my best defensive defenseman. Uh, and then Chris Russell and Evan Bouchard's the big question mark here. He has been progressing very well in the minors. He could really move up the lineup quick. But we gave them a C and a D+. Plus. Next, Florida Panthers. Uh, odd combination of, I still think there needs, there's some work that's going to be done here for the Florida lineup on defense. Um, but I love the first two, Wigger and Ekblad. I think Wigger might even take Ekblad's spot as the best defenseman in the league, in, on the, in the league, on their defense this year. I, I've been touting him for quite some time. Gustav Forsling, I, I liked him in Chicago. I, I remember when they moved him, I said, I think they're going to regret that move. And here he is playing in the top four in Florida and doing very well. Radko Gudis, solid defensive guy that can give you muscle and all of those sort of things like that that you need. Crit, as they like to say. Um, Montour, give, give him a little more of a look in Florida. He didn't look bad. He looked better than he did in Buffalo, but. Who doesn't look better than they did in Buffalo, whoever was in Buffalo? And the problem I have is it drops off quite a bit at Marcus Nudavara. I I really don't see him as an NHL defenseman as it is right now. Um, and there's nobody really knocking down the door, I don't think, to take his spot. Lucas Carlson. Oh, Matt Kierstedt, sorry. 
that's the guy I think Kirstap's going to have that spot. Maybe put Montour on the right side. That would be my choice there. Anyways, we but we gave them a B for their defense. Sounded about right. We both had we all had D. L.A. Kings. Um, I think it's an underrated defense. Michael Anderson uh, played fantastic last year. Drew Doughty uh, is always just Drew Doughty. Um, he's starting to slip as he gets older, though. He's he's slipping a little younger than I thought he would, um, but still good enough to be in your top two. Tobias Bjornfort and Matt Roy. These are nondescript defensemen that are playing well above people that people under, um, know their names. Like they're not, it's a no name defense that plays well above their names. Let's put it that way. And Alexander Edler and Sean Walker, and all of them are fairly on the young side. Um, we gave, we gave him a C and the more I think about it, I think that's a little low, but it is what we gave C to the Kings. Uh, Minnesota Wild, uh, after a lot of changes there in Minnesota, of course, uh, no, no suitor. Um, no suitor. As that, and, and changing of the guard. Also, Susie going. That's a big loss for Susie. Um, I'm going to go... What did we go here? Wild. Uh, I went B, but the community went B minus. I still love the top four. I still, I like Goligoski more than all the people too, even at 35, 36 years old. He's just got beautiful legs. What I mean by that is skating legs. It's not that I'm attracted to his legs. Uh, he's just got great skating legs. Um, and he can play till he's older because of it. Much like the one that Suter who left. Um, they gave him a one-year five mil too, so they don't even have to commit. I thought it was a great move. Uh, and Kulikov and Merrill are serviceable in the five six. To me, it was a B. The community gave them a B minus. I wonder what the Minnesota fans. What do you think there, but what buddies? What would you give them as a uh, rating grading? Put that down in the uh, comment section. We can discuss. Defense for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, I went a little lower than the community on this one. I'm not a huge, I'm, I'm not a huge Edmondson fan. I mean, he does what he does. He's big. He does cause problems in the defensive zone. He's more valuable in the playoffs than he is in the regular season. Um, Jeff Petrie had a stellar year last year at 34. Is he going to be able to repeat that though? Um, could, could that, but Ben, uh, Ben Chirot, Played very, very well last year and the year before when he wasn't injured way over what I thought he would be. Um, David Savard, I'm a little concerned, actually. He is big. Again, they like to go with their big defenseman there in Montreal. But he looked pretty rough last year in the second half, even when he was playing with Tampa Bay. Not a huge fan. Uh, Brett Kulak and then Alexander Romanoff. And one of the reasons why... Uh, the community of people that were voting for this had the Canadians higher than I did is a lot of them were huge fans of Alexander Romanoff. I like him too. I think he's going to be, he's going to be very good as well. Um, but he is only 21 years old. He's a big question mark. I kind of got to want to see it first. Uh, and the thing is, is that Montreal consistently doesn't play young players like him very enough, maybe. Well, we'll see how that turns out. And they, if anybody gets injured here, they're in trouble because they don't have anybody much to replace them. But the community gave Montreal a B. I gave them a C plus. Next, Nashville Predators. Um, again, I was a little lower than the community on this one. Uh, Roman Josie's fantastic. Alexander Carrier came in and did well. Uh, last year at 24 years old, he played very well. Uh, Matthias Ekholm, Philip Myers, he's going to have to come a ways. And my, I, I had it as a C plus because I'm not a Boriecki fan and I'm a little hesitant about Dante Fabro yet. 
that I still think he's not progressing as they wanted him to. I, I really, I believe that. I think if they thought he was progressing more than he was, they would have went a different route in the trade with Philip, uh, with Phil, not with Philadelphia, but in getting another right defenseman where they got Philip Myers, who now solidifies that spot and Fabro's going to have to beat him out. I have a feeling Fabro's not going to beat him out. Um, um, I'm just, I've seen actually a decline in Fabro. Tell me what you guys think, Nashville Predators fans. Mark Borecki is okay. Um, I gave him a C plus, but the community gave a B minus. So a little better in that regard. Next, New Jersey Devils. And uh, I gave a little, again, lower than the community on this one. Um, I love Ty Smith. I think Ty Smith is fantastic, but he is 21 years old. You know how the, the, the sophomore slumps. Hopefully, bringing in Dougie Hamilton will help that quite a bit. I love Graves, but then it just drops off quite a bit after that. P.K. Subban. Damon Severson, I don't... I used to really like that guy. But I find more and more he's dropping off every year. Tell me if you agree with me on that one. Um, he plays a lot of minutes, but should he be playing a lot of minutes? And maybe that's the reason why. He'll probably play a lot better given less minutes. He might be, they might've been overplaying him a little bit. Um, that, that, that might work. That might be the case. Uh, Jonas Siegenthaler, I really do like, uh, we'll see how he does next year, but I, I like him as a, as a kind of a, more of a seventh option, but right now he's in a five, six, which tells you that, um, their depth on defense isn't all that great still. It's just, it's better. I certainly wouldn't have given them uh, New Jersey a C, a C plus last year. And uh, the community gave them a B minus. So next, the live stream community, that is. Uh, New York Islanders. What did, did we have a difference in this? Yeah, this one, I was way higher than the other uh, than the uh, live stream community on this. Uh, Adam Pellick and, and, and Ryan Pulak is a great number one, two. People will say underrated. I think it's getting to the point where it's not underrated anymore. I think people are really understanding that this is a, a, a awesome shutdown pair. Um, Tom, I think the biggest reason why the community was a little low on the Islanders was that Thomas Hickey is there at the moment, but I do think that there'll be another upgrade for the Islanders. However, it was based on what they are here. Scott Mayfield is very underrated. Green has done very well. I don't know. Is he going to slip a bit at 38? Keep on asking it. And it, I mean, he's slipped, but he doesn't slip that much ever like since four years ago. He pretty much stays where he is at, which is a good five, six. And then Noah Dobson, to me, is the reason why mine might be higher. I think he takes Mayfield's spot here and makes that team be even more of a top, a great top 4D. Um, but that being said, the, uh, community, the streaming community gave the Islanders a C for defense. What do you think of that, Islanders fans? I gave them a B. This is like one of the biggest separations between me and the streaming community for what, for that, uh, for the grade. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm getting ahead of myself in my mind. Okay, next. New York Rangers. Um, love Lindgren, love Fox, love Keandre Miller, but they are still fairly young. Uh, and then Jacob Truba, okay. But my problem is the 5-6 spot. Getting Nemeth is pretty... Uh, he, would, he wouldn't be in your 5-6 in a lot of teams. Uh, I happen to play even higher than that in Detroit, actually. And Niels Lundqvist, I don't know what he's going to be like. Tell me, guys, New York Rangers fans, is he going to make it this year? But I think that's a big drop-off in the 5-6. And that's the reason why I had it. I had the Rangers as a C plus on defense. Um, however, that can really change fast. 
I like I love Lindgren and Fox so much. It's just their depth was my problem. I think the 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 overall depth on on the Rangers. However, the the streaming community gave them a B. So we're a little different there. Next, Ottawa Senators. Uh, we both. Got, they got a little higher. I think a lot of people might not give them as high a mark as we did. Uh, the streaming community gave them a C plus. Uh, I Shabbat Nikita Zaitsev. Ottawa fans complain about him quite a bit. Uh, he's not bad. I I would agree that I don't think he should be in his one two. I think that's going to go to Artem Zub next year. I he progressed so fast to North America when he came in and he looked really good. Uh, Eric Branstrom should get a really good opportunity next year. They've been patient with them, which is great. And uh, I think he probably could be ready. Nick Holden was a nice pickup from Vegas, um, especially for getting it for Dadanoff, who was a train wreck last year in Ottawa. I think that was a nice move. And Josh Brown. But you've got, I'm going to get a caveat here. I think Bernard Docker is going to get a better shot next year. I gave. For a young defense, we both gave them a C plus Ottawa, and that is a big endorsement because young defenses like this usually don't get overseas. It's just such a really strong young defense. Next, uh, Philadelphia Flyers. A lot of based on last year, but there was a lot of movement here with uh, uh, Provorov and our uh, getting Ellis from Nashville. Huge move. Um, without get, doing the move after what I saw last year, it was like a D minus for this team because it was just so bad. It was so bad last year. Travis, Travis Sandheim and the very debatable Rasmus Ristolainen. Analytics people say he's awful. Uh, my eye test was he he's a gamer. He's got all the tools. He just learn, needs to learn when to do things at the right time in the right place. If he can do that in Philadelphia, they got a beast. But it's a big question mark whether they're going to figure it out. And then Keith Yandel and Braun, uh, probably not the guys I want to be in a pairing, but not bad as a 5-6. I think it's okay. We gave them a C. Both community, the streaming community and I gave them a C. Uh, next, Pittsburgh Penguins and um, very mishmash defense here. Demolin and Latang. I think people forget Latang had 45 points in 55 games last year. He's still putting up numbers at 34 years old and playing a lot of minutes. Uh, Brian Demolin gets a lot of minutes. Is that all that warranted? I'm not sure. He, he's, he's, I think. Some say he's underrated. Some say he's overrated. I'm kind of in the overrated category myself. Um, Marcus Peterson, I really thought he was going to be way better than this by now. However, his analytics aren't bad. John Marino is a solid defensive defenseman. And then Michael Matheson played way better than he did in Florida, but I still wouldn't say awesome or anything. And Chad Ruriedo is just that guy that always just happens to be there, but if you're playing Rue Weedle in the sixth spot, things are a little light. Although they did play Pierre Oliver Joseph last year to, uh, with some pretty good results. But overall, I think the depth is the problem here with Pittsburgh. And the uh, streaming community kind of said the same thing, given a C+. Plus. Uh, San Jose Sharks uh, just... Uh, fire wagon burning blah <laughs> tire fire is what i want to say mario fierro played ferrero played well but you got extremely overrated burns i something in me tells me i get this feeling though that when kane gets out of that that room that things are kind of going to get back more to what they are there in uh san jose on defense like the energy is going to change and Carlson could have a really big year this year. Um, Kanizov, he he played well last year in a limited role. Radim Simic is where he is. He's a 5'6". He's never going to be uh, probably on a good defense. He'd be not even in the lineup. 
uh, not even, well, at least not on the ice a lot. And Mark Edward Vlasic is just going downhill so fast. It is nuts. It's going downhill with no skis. Uh, we both gave them an F minus. But I have a caveat that I do think they'll play better this year. But right now, can't give them more than an F. Sorry, San Jose fans. I, I, I think you probably give your own defense that. Though. Uh, next, Seattle. And there, people were all over the board here. Uh, I heard, saw as high as B, and I saw as low as D for the Seattle defense. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that you haven't seen them play together or anything like that. However, you're going from man on man. Mark Giordano, I think he'll be, now that he's out of Calgary and the, and the weight is kind of off of him, I think he's going to do pretty good. I mean, he'll be all right. Um, I, say the same about everybody here. If you're a Seattle fan and you don't know, Adam Larson is excellent at taking the puck off of other people's sticks, uh, especially in the defensive zone. He's very good at quickly getting the puck off people's sticks. Unfortunately, he's not very good at moving the puck after he gets it, but still solid enough if you play him with the right guy. And I like this Giordano Larson. That would probably be a good combination. Alexiak um, uh, and Vince Dunn. Vince Dunn is a big question mark. I don't know what he did in St. Louis, but he really ticked somebody off bad because uh, they wanted him out halfway through the season. Um, he had pretty uninspired play. So things are going to have to change for Vince Dunn here in Seattle. Um, Jamie Alexiak, I love that move. Beautiful pickup. Um, and then Carson Soucy, I talked about when I was doing Minnesota. I think he could end up supplanting Giordano here for minutes. He has, he has been so underrated in Minnesota. Um, great, moves a puck well, skates well, big, solid guy. I'm surprised Minnesota gave him up so easy. And then Hayden Fleury um, hasn't progressed very well, but he's he's okay in that sixth spot. Um, we have we gave them the community gave them a C. I gave a C plus. I think Alexia kind of gives it a bit of a plus there, and they're not they're not terrible all the way through. They they're 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 pretty solid all the way through. You could say their five six is better than a lot of other teams. So. They're not very great as far as high end is concerned, but all the way through, they have some pretty good depth. So I gave a C plus. The community gave a C. Uh, next. We'll get it back up here. There we go. St. Louis Blues. Yeah, I've turned the page here. Um, they were, they, we were all over the place here, and this was the biggest discrepancy between uh, the streaming community and I on the grade for the St. Louis Blues. The streaming community had a B minus. Um, but I thought, I didn't think Krug played, all, Krug is a good defenseman. He's good. Is he great? No. He's good. Um, he does everything well. He's, he's, he's good. Justin Falk. I'm not the biggest supporter of Justin Falk. Um, I think he, he can play really well. He's he's limited is the word I'm looking for. He's very limited, but he uses what he has well. But I, I wouldn't put him in a one-two spot. In fact, at this stage of their careers, I wouldn't put either Krug or Falk there. Colton Pareko, this, my score, my uh, grading could change. If Pareko comes and become it comes out and be is what they always expected him to be the big shutdown freaking put up some occasion put up some decent points, uh, blow you away type defenseman. But he really hasn't been, and a lot of it has been injury related. Maybe all of it. Uh, Marco Scandella is serviceable, but I wouldn't really want him in my four spot. Nico Mikola is big. You know, he's just a guy that. Plays defense. That's it. Like he's not special in any one area except the fact that he's big. Um, I'm going to look at him a little more. I haven't watched a ton of Miko Miko, so I'm going to reserve a little bit of judgment until I see him a lot more. I have watched a lot of Robert Bertuzzo, though, 
and he shouldn't be anybody's top five, six, and that's a problem. Their depth in uh, St. Louis is not very good. They, I really think they're going to have to go out and do something about the depth in St. Louis. I have the Blues as a D for defense. D for defense. See what I did there? The, uh, the streaming community had him, had him as a B minus. So, uh, Bolts, Tampa Bay Lightning next. And you got the best defenseman in the league. That's a start. Playing with Jan Ruda, though, who is pretty average. And then Ryan McDonough, one of the better shutdown defensemen, especially last year in the playoffs. Holy man, did he play fantastic. With Eric Chernock, who's also a very good young shutdown defenseman. Sergachev, is it when's he going to get to move up in this lineup? My gosh, as long as McDonough is there, maybe he doesn't get the opportunity. I don't know, but he should be. And then Bogosian. The problem is their right side brings the grade down a tad for me. I'm not a Zach Bogosian guy. I really don't think he should be anybody's top six myself. Um, they've got uh, Darren. They got Darren Radish there. That I think he'll Darren Radish will probably take that spot from him. However, because of the high upside of their great top four guys, Hedman, McDonough. Chernak and Sergachev, both the streaming community and I hit gave them an A for Tampa Bay. Next, Vancouver Canucks. And uh, I was surprised. I gave them a bit of, little better mark than the uh, streaming community did. Um, oh, wait, this is Toronto. Sorry. Forgot about the Leafs. The Leafs are next. <laughs> uh, so... The Toronto Maple Leafs, we, I think we both looked at this defense and it's like we, we kind of want to see what happens here. Is Rasmus Sandin going to be good enough there? Uh, he's going to be good. Is it this year? Is it next year? Is it next year? That's the problem. I think it's this year. I really like the guy. And when he's, if he's busting it out, this defense looks not too bad. Uh, Morgan Riley is kind of a S show defensively. Uh, TJ Brody is an underrated defensive defenseman, has been for quite some time. Jake Muzzin, I love. I think he's probably their best defenseman, actually, if you ask me. Jake Muzzin. Justin Hole, I do not understand for the love of me why they went gave up McCann to keep Ju Justin Hole, except that the fact that defense is just such a difficult spot for them. That would be it. Um, and then Travis Dermott to me is barely a defense, uh, an NHL defenseman. At the very least, he should be a depth guy. And that's a problem here. Their depth is still a problem on defense. Um, the, uh, the community, the streaming community gave them a C. I gave them a C plus. And that's hard to do considering last year they were seventh in defensive numbers. But we did. We did it. That's what we did. Now, the Vancouver Canucks, I believe. Yes. Now, the Vancouver Canucks. And um, Quinn Hughes, awesome offensive, offensive defenseman, terrible defensive defenseman. Uh, but he's still young. He's still going to learn the defensive side of the game. I believe Quinn Hughes will figure that out. Whether that's this year, I don't know. Tyler Myers, same thing. Uh, averaged offensive defenseman. Not very good defensively. Um, Ekman, Oliver Ekman Larson has struggled defensively for the last two years uh, and a little bit on the offense as well for him. But he could change that around in Vancouver. Travis Hamanek, eh, he's all right. And then once you get to Ulevi and Tucker Pullman, that's not good. That is not good. Um, however, I gave them a D. And the and the streaming community gave them a D minus, so I actually gave a little better mark for Vancouver than the uh, than the streaming community did. What do you give them, Vancouver fans? What do you think they get? Uh, Washington Capitals. The uh, what did we do for that? Oh yeah, um, it's very average. Orloff is hitting thirty now. He does everything well. He's one of those guys that does everything well. 
um, he, but is not spectacular at anything. John Carlson, you know, unbelievable offensive defenseman. His numbers were down a little bit last year. I think his offense more than makes up for his defensive lapses, which I don't think he's the worst offensive defenseman with uh, as far as defense is concerned in the league. I don't think he's that, that bad compared to a lot of other players, but um, he's still not great, that's for sure. Michael Kempney and Justin Schultz is very iffy. And then Trevor Van Riemsdyk and Nick Jensen. It, it's slipping. It's slipping. I got him with the community. The streaming community gave him a C. I gave them a C minus. And uh, it's getting worrisome for Washington this year, I think, as they're all getting older. But uh, it's not the most wonderful def defense on paper, that's for sure. Next, uh, Vegas, the Vegas Gold Knights. Um, the community, uh, Alec Martinez and Alex Peter Angelo, nothing wrong with that. That's a great combination. Uh, McNabb and Theodore. Um, it's still good. Theodore especially, fantastic. I, I think Theodore should be up in the top spot, but I think Peter Angelo plays better with Martinez, but I think Theodore is their best defenseman. A lot of people think otherwise. I don't. Uh, and then Nicholas Hag And I, I, I think Zach Whitecloud played very, very well last year. Um, I actually gave this defense a B plus. The streaming community gave them a B. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with Nicholas Hag being in there. Um, and I get that. He, he has been struggled when he's been up. And it looks like they're going to give him a fair shake here to try to be as good as they can be. But I think that top four holds him in easy as long as there's not some major injuries. Um, tell me what you figure, Vegas fans. Next, the Winnipeg Jets, the final one. And all over the place on this one. Saw it as high as B. I saw somebody gave him a D minus. Um, Nate Schmidt struggled last year quite a bit and kind of the year before, actually. Um, so Winnipeg is really looking to bring the uh side of Nate Schmidt that everybody thought he was going to be a great two-way uh defenseman that he has the ability to do and I actually think that it's very likely that uh Paul Maurice will do that he has a tendency of bringing the best out of defensemen um Joshua Morrissey he probably isn't your one-two I, I don't think they have a one-two here that's the thing Brendan Dillon very good uh solid uh de defensive defenseman doesn't put up bad numbers. He brings the pain. Um, Got to like it. And Neil Pionk, probably maybe their best defenseman last year. Uh, Smallish. You probably don't ideally want him on a 1-2, but he can play there. And, and he doesn't really hurt you that much. Uh, Logan Stanley and Dylan DeMello is okay. Um, it, it's, it's an okay defense, which is why the streaming community gave him a B-. minus. And I gave them a B minus, which is up from last year for sure. And with uh, Hollabuck being there, it may just well be enough. Not to mention, I like their offense quite a bit. All right, that's my full forty-two, boys and girls. Uh, that's all I have to give today. There you are. Uh, thanks for coming in and joining the fine programming. I will be sending this out to all the lands and be ready for my next adventures. And come to my live. Hit the subscribe and the bell. Come to my live so you can be part of this. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.